Hello and welcome to the Davis McGrath LLC IP webinar series for July 11th, 2012. I'd like to thank you all for attending. Uh, please pardon any glitches that uh, may have occurred uh, through some problems with the, uh, the webinar service, but those seems to have uh, been straightened out. Um, today we'll be covering the new top of internet domains. Uh, we'll be going for about 30 minutes. And um, the recording and slides will be posted on our blog, which is blog.davismcgrath.com forward slash webinars, where you can also sign up for a mailing list. Uh, for those of you who need Illinois MC Elite credit, uh, please send your name and ARDC number to me if you haven't already done so as part of signing up. Uh, and FYI, our next webinar is coming up on August 8th, 2012, uh, from again from about 12 to about 12.30 on the topic of copyright and Right Haven. And that Right Haven is the company that's uh, been suing uh, uh, people for posting news articles online and uh, run into several difficulties on that and it's an interesting topic. So we'll be covering that for about 30 minutes next next month. Uh, today we'll be covering uh, the, the, the new top level domains that are going online. Um, we're going to be covering uh, what is a top level domain, uh, who are the applicants, uh, what was applied for, uh, talk a little bit about the formal objections process, um, and then once that process is done, the uh, string contention process to uh, make, a, make their way through whoever manages to get through the objection process. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the trademark clearinghouse and uh, steps to consider uh, for practice and uh, um, for uh, protecting uh, people's interests. So first off, uh, what is a top-level domain? Uh, it, quite simply, it's everything to the right of the initial dot. So .com, .net, and .org are uh, the most famous of the uh, top-level domains that currently exist. And now uh, ICANN has set up a process for allowing uh, people to come up with their own custom um, domains. Uh, these uh, would be anything after the right of the dot. They call anything to the right of the dot a string. And so um, the, we'll be talking about strings a lot today. And strings uh, could be whatever the applicant has chosen to do. And next question is who are these applicants? Uh, they can be established corporations, organizations, or institutions in good standing. Uh, individuals or sole proprietorships could not apply. It's part of this round. Uh, the application fee is $185,000 per application, and uh, uh, the application itself is, is quite detailed. It, it requires a lot of technical information about uh, what uh, the, the people will uh, be able to uh, do and, and how, the, how the, they plan to use the, the domain. Uh, a lot of technical details about, about uh, how, how they, they plan to implement the domain. Uh, on a real technical level, and so it's it's a rather complicated process to even submit an application. Uh, the application fee is is quite high. Uh, some of that has been reserved by ICANN for future legal disputes, and uh, most of the rest, though, is is planned to be uh, eaten up through as part of this uh, complicated application process. So as a result uh, of this, there are 1,930 applications for new top-level domains. Uh, there are 230 of them that have more than one applicant. Um, and there are um, 751 applications uh, for those 230 domains. Um, there are 84 that are self-designated as a community. In other words, uh, the uh, domain is intended to represent a community of potential users. And then there are 66 geographic designations. Uh, that uh, includes um, uh, so something like dot .brazil or something along those lines. Um, the most contested of those 230, there are 13 separate applications for .app, 11 for .home, 11 for .inc, uh, 7 for .mail, uh, 7 for .web, etc. There are also 116 of these domains that will be made up of non-English characters. For example, um, I show two um, characters in Japanese which are translated to English mean book. 
uh, and that was applied for by Amazon. Uh, some of these are going to be open registries. In other words, um, there could be uh, third parties that uh, uh, will allow uh, they will allow third parties to register domains under them. And other ones are are intended to be uh, uh, closed. And the, the applicant uh, who is applying to spend this hundred eighty five thousand dollars intends to use the domain if they get it uh, for their own business purpose. For example. Uh, AAA dot AAA is uh, going to be a closed registry, and that's applied for by the American Automobile Association. And uh, dot Academy is planned for it to be an open. So anybody who who feels that uh, that that they need to uh, have a domain that would be under dot Academy uh, would be uh, eligible to apply for a, for a subdomain through that registry. Um, we'll go through the the process here in a little more detail, but uh, we're currently in what's called the comment period, which is 60 days from the announcement, which is on June 13th. Um, and these comments uh, will be made, you can still make a comment after 60 days, but it would just go into the more permanent record. Uh, what will happen now is any comments made will be uh, reviewed and uh, considered as, as part of the evaluation process that, that's going on right now. Um, it should be noted that uh, a, a comment is, is not the same thing as a formal objection, though. So if you do have a formal objection uh, that you, know, you can make as a comment, but if you do want to formally object, you'll have to uh, pay the fees to do so, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, so all the applications are now going through what's called the initial evaluation process. Uh, the applications are reviewed for technical competency, uh, financial stability, and their ability to actually run a registry. Uh, the strings, you know, everything right to the right of the dot, will be evaluated for its effect on the, the top level domain system for security and stability, and also to see um, w w what potential uh, contentions exist uh, between applications. Uh, applications uh, for the same domain uh, will be, uh, for the same string, will be, be part of what's called a contention set, uh, which these applications will be reviewed together. Um, and uh, uh, so that, that's certainly part of the process in, in, in which uh, they'll be bunched together. Um, it should be noted that they, they originally didn't plan on these many applications. Um, but but they certainly left the left over in the applicant guidebook uh, you know rules for this uh, since there's so many they're going to be batching them in groups of 500. Uh, the real question is who's going to be part of which batch, and um, uh, we'll see how that that process goes. So they originally had come up with a a process that they called digital archery, where they uh, uh, set up a a date and time when the 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 person would come back and and try to hit. Uh, hit an OK button as, as close as possible to that date and time, and how close that they got to that date and time would uh, initiate, uh, you know, the, their their space in the in the line. Sort of like click, his, you fire your arrow, and, uh, and see whether or not it lands. And um, for a, a reason uh, that's a little murky, uh, they they've uh, abandoned that process, and uh, so we'll have to see how they end up batching them. Uh, but but they, they will have to they, they cannot evaluate all 1,930 at once, so we'll see how how this this all works out. Um, just in general, here's a page from the applicant guidebook. Um, the guidebook itself is 338 pages long. Um, starting here on top is 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 uh, is where we are now. Uh, the application uh, is is through this this um, uh, yellow. Uh, diamond, which is uh, the initial evaluation process. Uh, the blue section in the middle is uh, where the, the objection process, um, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, this in a little more detail. Uh, there's four potential uh, objections that can be made, um, and then after that process, um, if if there are any remaining in in a contention set. Uh, there's a process that that's gone through to uh, determine who actually wins, and um, uh, if if the the applicants can't resolve it among themselves as to who who has uh, the the most right to a particular uh, string, uh, it's going to go to auction. 
and we'll see uh, you know how much money is, is generated. Um, there are rules in the guidebooks though for uh, you know the, the proceeds from any auction uh, will have to be uh, banked uh, by ICANN into um, you know some other uh, charitable purpose of its own. It, it will not profit from from these auctions. Uh, but you know whatever whatever money the monies that are generated in these auctions will go towards um, you know the development of of the, the top level domain system, and then assuming that they get through that process, there's a, a delegation process that's down here in the lower right, uh, which uh, will allow uh, the domain itself to go online and allow people to actually uh, receive the domains. Um, as part of the initial application process, there's a, a government advisory council that can uh, provide warnings if, if there's a particular uh, ap application or part of the application uh, that, uh, that you know, may cause problems in a particular country. Uh, but this is merely advisory. It, it's not a formal objection. If the uh, country needs to object, they've got to do so as, as part of the formal objection process. Um, so the, uh, there are four possible bases for an opposition, which we'll talk about. There's a seven-month objection period, which begins now. The first is string confusion, and uh, that is that uh, the, the string of characters is confusingly similar to an existing top-level domain or to another top line applied for a top-level domain string. It should be noted that if you're in a contention set, you cannot also file a string confusion objection. You know, your, your, your objections are going to be taken care of as, as part of the later string contention process. But let's say, for example, see there are six applicants for dot .law, and there's also two applicants for dot .lawyer. And if for whatever reason uh, these people are not put in the same contention set, uh, the dot .lawyer people could object to the dot .law application as part of the string confusion application process. Or if they there are somehow confusingly similar to an existing top level domain, uh, such as you know .com, .net, .org. There's also .pro, .mobi, you know those those types of of domains. And if they're confusingly similar to one of those, um, they can be objected to as well. Uh, the next one is uh, legal rights. That would be the the potential top level domain string of characters violates the legal rights of the objector, and this most likely this would be a trademark basis, um, you know. But if there's other legal rights that would be affected, uh, this would be the time to to bring such an objection. Uh, it should be noted that a good chunk of uh, the um, uh, domains that are are applied for as part of this uh, likely uh, are, are are would be considered generic domains, other than uh, ones that would be uh, company names that are applied for by that company. Um, like .google has been applied for by Google for uh, its own top-level domain, uh, so um, likely that you know nobody else is going to be objecting to that. Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, there's .coach, and uh, a group of uh, sports people uh, have applied for .coach for uh, I, I believe a sports-related registry, but also uh, the handbag company Coach. Uh, has also applied for dot coach and so we'll have to see um, you know how this plays out uh, so, so certainly these people could file a, a legal rights objection uh, you know to the to the to the, the sports groups application uh, limited public interest um, this is more interesting is you play it's a claim that is made that the applied for top level domain string of characters goes against generally accepted legal norms of morality and public order, and uh, you know what type of objections would these be? Uh, for example, one of the uh, uh, top-level domains that's been applied for is .wtf, uh, which is uh, a texting acronym for uh, a sort of a rude phrase. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's certainly possible that somebody could object on that that basis, saying that uh, it'd be a, of limited public interest to have uh, you know .wtf. Um, you know, there's also people who could be objecting, uh, you know, similar, some, some, similarly to some of the objections that were raised when dot triple X was applied for. Uh, the same company, ICM Registry, has applied for like dot porn and, um, and other related, um, you know, they've applied for dot sex, dot porn, and dot adult. Um, and so they, they certainly, uh, um, 
you know, potentially could be facing objections from community groups uh, saying that it's of limited public interest. We'll see. Uh, community objection. Uh, this would be uh, for those that are community applications um, and uh, an objection saying either like these people don't represent the community or uh, this is a, a particular community that does not need uh, to be re represented by a, by a domain. Um, so we'll have to see how, how these play out. Uh, it should be noted that, that there's a, a procedure, of course, <laughs> uh, for, for each type of objection. Uh, each filing basis has a different provider uh, which fees to be paid uh, that administers the objection process. So, for example, dot WIPO, uh, sorry, WIPO would administer the uh, legal rights process. Um, they have a, a, a sliding ski, a, a sliding scheme of, of fees, in which their lowest is two thousand dollars for a single panelist, um, and then uh, there are panelist fees that have to be paid uh, depending on the number of objections that are made. Uh, and the lowest possible is eight thousand dollars. So, um, you know, you could be at $10,000 easy um, trying to make a legal rights objection. And, of course, uh, there's a, a fee to be paid by the respondent, and, and uh, uh, so if, if they're interested in defending, you know, the objection, you know, there's, there's fees there as well. Um, here's a, a page from the applicant guidebook explaining the, the different uh, process, um, you know, they'll initially uh, file uh, the, uh, the, the, the proceeding, uh, they'll check to see if it meets the procedural rules, then objection will be posted on the website, um, and then there will be, they'll notify the applicant of, of all relevant objections that are made, um, the applicant will file a response and uh, pay a filing fee, they have 30 days to do so. They will then consolidate these objections if possible, and then a panel will be appointed and in which for about 45 days uh, the, uh, the panel will, will review uh, the, 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 the objections and the response and, um, uh, and then uh, make a determination of, of the merits of, of the objection. And if they clear all objection, uh, the applicant then proceed to subsequent stages. Uh, but if the applicant cannot, you know, that could be the end of the process for a particular application. So the next uh, phase would be string contention. Uh, that would be um, where, there, like I said before, where there's more than one surviving application for the same or similar uh, top-level domain strings. Uh, there's a special part of the process that uh, can be done uh, for communities, if there's more than one community application together, uh, a panel can be appointed to compare the communities and see who best represents the community. Um, but the normal process, as I said before, is that uh, the applicants should try to work together to see if they can agree to who gets the domain, make some sort of side deals amongst each other. And uh, But if they can't agree, then there'll be an auction for which, as I said before, the proceeds will go towards um, some other charitable purpose of ICANN relating towards uh, the top-level domain system. Now, the question that has come up is, what what's going to happen if there is, uh, you know, once this process goes through, I mean, how often are you going to be seeing these? Um, well, I can anticipate there being multiple application rounds in the future for, for the additional top-level domains. They're going to learn a little bit from the process uh, that they're going through now uh, to see uh, just what exactly um, is, uh, is uh, their, their learning process you know, from here, what, what mistakes were made, what, 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 what can the application process be tightened or, or changed. And uh, they hope to start the next application round within one year of the last round's application process. Uh, that's what's uh, uh, you know been been published in the um, application guidebook. Which means one year from from last June. Um, uh, probably a more realistic determination would be perhaps a year from the end of the process. You know, once they they finally get some all the way through to the delegation phase. You know, with some are actually implemented. I I think it's much more realistic to see. Uh, some more top of domains um, application rounds starting, um, you know, maybe a year from that point. But we'll see. Uh, 
of course, if, if people are interested, uh, you know, they, they certainly can monitor the ICANN site for, for news. Um, it should be noted that uh, the, as part of the top-level domain process, um, that a trademark clearinghouse is going to be set up. It's, it's currently in process, but has not been done so. Um, and as, as part of delegating domains under these these uh, these new top level domains, you know when the when people come to them saying I want uh, let's say for example they get dot law, and uh, they want to uh, people want to register domains under dot law, there'll be a trademark clearinghouse set up that uh, the registry will have to compare its trademarks against uh, you know, the applications against to see whether or not there's a, a trademark application you know on point uh, that would bar uh, the applicant string. Um, it's currently expected to cost uh, perhaps $150 per trademark registered, and uh, so certainly uh, would be um, you know a lot cheaper than trying to register uh, the domain and in, in sorry we're registering the, the trademark in each in each domain uh, on, a, on a defensive basis, and so um, you know that's certainly a, a process that uh, uh, trademark owners uh, should certainly look into. As um, as we learn more details about it, we'll certainly let people know. So uh, the immediate steps to take, um, I would say, review the list of applications to see if there's any problematic ones among the 1,930 applications for legal or other reasons. Uh, the trademark owners should register their trademarks with the trademark clearinghouse uh, when that becomes available, and then, on a going forward basis. I think people really do need to stop and look and think about you know what these you know, multiples of top level domains will have on your clearance monitoring and business plans. Um, you know it's, it certainly will not be cost effective for for people to register uh, problematic domains just to keep them out of hands of others, uh, as a lot of people tend to do with dot com. Uh, you know they just register things defensively. Um, it, it's certainly uh, will be difficult to see uh, and, and and difficult and very expensive uh, to register these across you know all these multiple domains that go online. You know, just think uh, if even 500 go online in the next year, um, you know that will significantly increase uh, the number of potential domains. And if 500 more or 500 more after that, you know you can see see where this potentially goes down the hill. Um, and also. Um, it, it it becomes uh, you know very difficult from from a, a monitoring standpoint, and so um, you know companies cert certainly might want to look more into uh, providing or, or obtaining a a, a watch service uh, that can watch all these multiple applications, uh, and then you know provide some input on you know what uh, you know what processes need to be done. So. Um, so certainly, some people might want to look at their own business plans as well. Uh, you know, potentially, um, you know, if these catch on and don't turn into uh, some other, like some other top-level domains, which turn out to be more business failures than others. Um, but uh, you know, if these catch on and, and people see a real business need for these, uh, you know, people might want to you know look at applying as as part of the later or subsequent rounds. So I provided a list of resources. Uh, the ICANN website, in which uh, they provide uh, you know, a lot of details, including the applicant guidebook, is is there. New GLT, new GTLDs at ICANN.org, and um, from there you can also see the list of applications and their status uh, in the application results page. And uh, uh, our own Christopher Schneider here at, at the firm uh, had wrote an article about this, uh, which we posted to our firm blog, and I uh, put a. A, um, a link to that as well for those that are interested. So this would be a good time. If uh, anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask them. Uh, of course, uh, you've had the opportunity all the way through, you know, to ask questions through the uh, through the software. Uh, but if you do have questions at this time, uh, you know, please feel free to submit them. Uh, for those of you that are watching the recording. And you have questions? Uh, please feel free to email me at the address shown at the bottom of your screen, or call. So we'll pause for a second here to see if anybody has any questions.
Aha, if you're still here, I see you had a question, Lisa. Um, are there renewal fees? Uh, how long does the registration last? Um, the uh, I, I believe you're you're asking about uh, registering uh, these top level domains um, the, the, uh, themselves. Uh, the top I'll answer the two ways I think I see this potentially you could be asking. Uh, one is about the top level domains themselves. Uh, this is an application process to become a top level to provider. And so there's annual fees that will be paid to ICANN for operating the domain. Uh, they have to agree to to run the domain for at least three years um, as part of the application process. Uh, but after that, if if it turns no longer to meet their business needs, they can stop after three years. Uh, so ICANN gets at least three years worth of fees uh, for for running running each each of these domains that gets gets approved. Uh, the second way I think you could be asking is about registering with the Trademark Clearinghouse. Uh, and it, I believe it's a, it's a one-time fee for, for registering the domain at $150 is the current plan. Uh, but we will see how that goes. Um, you know, it, it certainly could, um, uh, they could have renewal fees on that. But it's just, uh, it, it's not part of the proposal at this point as far as I'm aware. So I hope this answers your question. And um, thank you very much. I also want to thank everyone for their patience uh, dealing with some of the issues we had earlier with the uh, with the webinar software. Well, since it seems like uh, nobody else has any questions at this particular point, um, I'll wrap things up. And again, a reminder, our, our next webinar is coming up on August 8th, 2012, on the subject of copyright and right haven. Uh, more information on, is at blog.davisonmcgrath.com forward slash webinars. Um, again, those of you who need an Illinois MCLE credit, if you haven't already provided me your name and ARDC number, you can do so by email. And um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Have a great day.